Welcome to the 2020 Whistle Stop Winter Haven Virtual Hobnob. Welcome. My name is Katie Worthington Decker and I am the president and CEO of the Greater Winter Haven Chamber of Commerce and it is my privilege to be your MC for this video series. Whistle Stop Winter Haven is traditionally an in-person event where members of the public can come together to shake hands and get to know the candidates that are on the ballot through one-on-one -on -one conversations. But as we all know, 2020 is a year to adapt. So we have pivoted this event to an online series of Zoom interviews. We certainly hope you take the time to listen to each of the candidates and learn a little bit more about them and what they stand for and while they're running. We have invited every candidate on the ballot in Polk County to participate. And we want to thank those candidates who did decide to do it. Full disclosure, the Winter Haven Chamber does not endorse any individual candidates, but we do believe in an informed electorate. So we hope that you find these videos useful as you are getting ready to fill out your ballot. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors for this video series. Our presenting sponsor is Citizens Bank and Trust. Our Meet the Candidate sponsor is Spectrum. Our additional sponsors include Citrus Connection, the Hemingway Group Realtors with Crosby and Associates, John Wood Realty, and the campaign of Sam Killebrew District 41. As I mentioned, there are two important dates for you to remember coming up in this election. On August 18th is the primary. And while there are the traditional Democrat and Republican primary races, there are also some very important local races that will be decided during that election. These include school board, county commission, supervisor of election, and the Lake Region Lakes Management District. And of course, the second date to remember is the general election that will be held nationally on November 3rd. We hope that you will find this video series useful and please encourage your family and friends that are eligible to vote to do so. It is our greatest right as American citizens. Enjoy. Lori, thank you so much for agreeing to participate in the 2020 Whistle Stop Winter Haven Virtual Hobnob. And we really appreciate you being a part of this because by purchasing your virtual booth, you have allowed us to really take the time to educate the voters in Polk County about many of the races that are on the ballot this fall. And since you did purchase your virtual booth, the Florida Division of Elections does require you to make the following statement. Okay. Um... This is a paid political advertisement approved by Lori Cunningham for School Board District 2. So Lori, tell our viewers that may not know you a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, hello. My name is Lori Cunningham and I am currently the chairman of the Polk County School Board. I am running for re-election to the school board for District 2. My parents immigrated to the United States of America after World War II from the former Yugoslavia, having been raised in an ethnic household with very limited English speaking skills. I didn't speak any English when I started the first grade. With the love and support of my parents and teachers, I was reading on grade level within two years. I then excelled in my academics from that point forward and it gave me the solid foundation that I needed to graduate with high honors from high school, pursue an engineering degree in college, work in industry, and start my own business. My journey has inspired me to work with students from diverse cultural backgrounds to encourage them to stay in school, stay focused, work hard, make good choices, and graduate from high school. On a personal note, I've been married to my husband, Rick, for 34 years, 
who is a science teacher at Davenport School of the Arts. We have one daughter, Christina, who just graduated from Harrison School for the Arts and will be attending the University of Pennsylvania this fall. So Very that's a little bit about me. <laughs> so, and how many years have you served on the Polk County School Board? I've been on the board in November, it will be 16 years. So tell us a little bit about, that's a long time. What are you most proud of during your tenure on the Polk County School Board? Wow, there's a lot of great things that have happened over the years. Um, the first thing that I guess I would say I'm the most proud of is our graduation rate. Um, we have continuously increased the graduation rate um, and currently it's at an all time high of 80.4% for all of our schools and 86.5% for our 14 traditional high schools. Um, secondly, uh, we have um, continued to maintain a B for our school district um, for two consecutive years in a row. Um, Additionally, we have more than 100 career academies that help our students develop professional skills and prepare them for their future in a wide variety of industries. And 23 of these academies are nationally certified and 12 are designated as model academies. Fourth, um, we have a Florida Alliance for Arts Education has recognized six of our schools as providing exemplary arts programs. Additionally, we have added a variety of rigorous academic programs throughout our district, such as the Advanced Placement, International Baccalaureate, and the Cambridge program. And these are just a few um, of the accomplishments that um, I'm especially proud of that we as a district have accomplished. Well, and there are a lot of amazing things that have happened um, uh, over that course of time. And, and here in Winter Haven, we're certainly very proud of many of those, including the Cambridge program and various yes. things that we've had a, a hand in, in bringing into the district. Um, so a lot of those are strengths. Um, and so they kind of go very nicely into my next question, which is what do you believe uh, are our district's greatest strengths? That's a great question. Um, I believe in my heart that the greatest strength that the Polk County public school system has is our people. Um, over the past four months, I have witnessed how passionate, dedicated, and caring our employees have been during this most unsettling time. Our employees have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty to put students first. There was no policy, no instruction manual on how to teach students during a safe at home pandemic. I witnessed teachers, paras, custodians, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, maintenance personnel, administrators, district staff, and volunteers all come together to take care of our kids. From daily car line food distribution, to handing out iPads, we reinvented our entire educational system within 10 days. Using Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom to Zoom and Class Dojo, our teachers reached out to our students and did an incredible job of online learning. Our counselors encouraged our students to keep going and finish strong. Our transportation folks equipped 50 school buses countywide with Wi-Fi that were staged throughout Polk County to provide internet access to our students. Our Polk County public school employees, to me, are our greatest strength and our greatest asset. So on the, and you are absolutely correct, the, the pivot to this, uh, I don't even want to say new normal, because this is never going to feel normal <laughs> um, in terms of, of what our school district has had to do to pivot. And um, so many of the, as you said, every layer uh, of the district has done an incredible job um, with that for the benefit of the students, which is great. 
So on the flip side of that, um, what do you believe are school districts' greatest challenges at this point of time? Well, to me, the single most greatest challenge that we are currently facing is the reopening of our schools this fall. Um, providing a safe and organized plan with educational choices for parents, to me, is my number one priority. And it is a challenge because we have never been down this path before. Uh, the district created a reopening task force comprised of close to 100 members uh, from representative groups from throughout Polk County. And these folks have worked tirelessly, both as a committee and in subcommittee roles uh, to come up with three learning options for our families to consider. Those three options include number one, campus learning, which would be um, at a brick and mortar school that the child is zoned for. Number two, campus e-school, which would be 100% online at the zone school. And number three, Polk Virtual School, which would be 100% online, not in connection with the child zone school. So parents have been asked to fill out a form in order to choose which option they would most prefer for their students. And then once those forms are received, then the information can be provided for transportation, meals, and so on. And I know that there's lots of questions regarding masks and so forth, and some of those things are still being looked at. We are slated, as we have publicly noticed, um, to open schools on Monday, August the 24th. And I just want to say that we continue to work with our local health officials um, to monitor the pandemic and in order to make really the best possible decisions um, as we move forward. Uh, we are asking everyone to please remain flexible to adapt because as we receive more information, we will be providing that daily as the days and weeks go on. And so I'm asking everyone for their patience and understanding as we navigate this journey, uh, because we've never been through anything like this before. And there are way more questions than we currently have answers to, but I do believe working together, we can provide the best opportunity for learning and education for our students in Polk County. So that to me is the greatest challenge in the next probably six months to a year. You know, I, it's interesting with your tenure on the district, I'm, I'm um, naturally wanna ask you, is this the hardest decision you think has come before you or is this in the top three hardest decisions yes. that you've had to handle? Yes, yeah. ma'am. I, I do believe um, this is one of the most difficult times um, in the time and the length that I have been on the board um, because there are so many unknowns. There is no history to look back on to be able to see, well, what did we do last time? How was that handled? What were provisions? We're kind of, you know, as we did those first two weeks after we closed schools in March, um, we had to totally transition from classroom to, to e-learning. And I mean, who on earth has that, would have ever thought that we would be learning to do that as we go? Um, but yes, this is probably the greatest uh, challenge that I believe I've faced since being on the board and then add in the responsibility of being the chair and trying to coordinate in meetings and discussions and information. It, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a very difficult but rewarding because we're moving forward and we're going to do and make the best decision that we can as we move forward to reopen schools. So thinking about this next year, um, if you are reelected, what other priorities? Obviously, COVID is certainly top of mind and how we handle that uh, in the school district. But what other priorities would be top priority for you as you start this next year? Okay, well, again, my top Priority um, as we speak today is the reopening of schools, obviously providing a safe um, and organized plan and choices for parents, um, as we kind of discussed in the, in the previous question. 
Um, secondly, our next, to me, most challenging um, priority is going to be the hiring of a new superintendent of schools. Um, as you probably know, um, Ms. Bird um, has given us a letter and she is intending to retire um, in February of 2021. Um, and so to that end, we have um, had four search firms come to our work session via Zoom and they presented their proposals to our board during the July 14th work session. And our next step, of course, is to have board discussion on July the 28th, coming up next week, to determine which company we would like to retain. However, let me say that I personally have been very pleased with Superintendent Bird and the tremendous impact that she has had on our school district. Mrs. Bird has a heart for children, unlike any other superintendent that I have worked with. She supports our students and staff by regularly visiting schools, listening to staff, and interacting with students and their families by attending events across our county. Since appointed, Mrs. Bird has encountered many difficult situations from day one. And I must say she has handled those with the utmost of grace and dignity. She is an incredible ambassador for our school district and is respected by leaders throughout our county, our state and our nation. We have achieved gains across all areas of the strategic plans district objectives because of Superintendent Bird's commitment and her leadership. She is a dedicated professional and we have been truly blessed by her service to Polk County Schools. And while we are moving forward with the superintendent search, um, it is my prayer that at some point in time, she may reconsider um, and decide to stay. But if not, I wish her well and thank her for her commitment and service to Polk County Schools. So if Superintendent Bird uh, does decide not to stay, what would you be looking for in a candidate? Okay, so my kind of given this some thought as we're going through the process and I have several um, leadership profile um, attributes that I think will be important going forward. Um, I believe in our next superintendent or the one that we have possesses a proven ability to enhance student achievement, especially in identifying and closing and narrowing gaps in student performance. Um, I would hope that a quality we would have is someone who maintains a strong commitment to a student-centered servant leadership philosophy in all decisions. Additionally, I would hope that the individual demonstrates sensitivity to the needs of culturally diverse students, workforce, and community. I also feel that the person would need to be involved in all segments of the community to secure partnerships, support, and confidence in our public school system. Additionally, that person would need to maintain sound fiscal practices and management of district resources, including appropriate participation of others in planning and decision-making. And I would hope that that person would inspire trust, has high levels of self-confidence and optimism, and displays high standards of integrity and personal performance. And certainly, um, I would expect the individual um, to be a solid communicator with wonderful communicative skills, both verbally, um, written, and listening, which I think is so important. There are many others that I could continue to talk about, but I think those are probably my top leadership uh, profile attributes that I would be looking for as we would be interviewing candidates and I would be looking for areas in which they have shown this 
in a previous district in which they have served. Very good. And so final question. Yes, um, you do have a, a challenger uh, this year in the race. And so if you were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a voter, what would you tell them to explain why they should choose you over the other candidate? Okay, so um, first of all, as you've already mentioned, I have served on the board for 16 years and I feel that I have proven my leadership on the board as well as the experience from being on the board and serving on various committees throughout the Polk County Public School System and our community. Um, I have a servant heart and I've served on many local, county, state boards um, throughout the years, providing information, expertise, um, and offering what I know in order for folks to make good decisions. And also to be a public servant and to represent our district at all those levels. Additionally, I have mentored students through our Take Stock and Children program. I have also mentored adults on career and life skills because I have learned that there is a ripple effect. If you're able to positively impact one child, you actually have the opportunity to make a difference in the life of an entire family and I have seen that firsthand. Additionally, um, my husband and I have raised two young ladies through the Polk County Public Schools, my daughter, Christina, and my sister, um, who we adopted uh, years ago as well. So, and most importantly, with my background um, and having served um, as part of my career as the executive director of the Haines City Chamber of Commerce, I learned an important fact. Education is economic development. And it is the basis and the foundation for a thriving and prosperous community. And so through the years, I feel like I have been led to be in different positions in the community um, prior to running for school board in order to enable me to be at this point in my life to be able to give back to folks. So I believe that education is the key and the foundation for, for a solid, thriving, prosperous community. Um, and it is so important that we prepare our students for post-secondary education, for entrance into the workforce, or whatever they might want to do after high school. So uh, that is why I feel that I am the best candidate for this reelection campaign. Well, thank you. And, and you are right. We are a, uh, at the Winter Haven Chamber, strongly involved in the public education system and, and all educational offerings uh, in Polk County. But we are certainly a chamber that pays really close attention to what's happening at the school district and partnering with them in many ways. And so um, I do really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to participate in this interview and to allow the general public in a year where you can't knock on a lot of doors, you can't have a lot of rallies, um, but this allows people to learn a little bit more about you um, and about uh, why you are running again for re-election. So I really want to thank you very much for participating in this video series. Thank you so much for having us and for providing this opportunity where we can speak to the voters and speak to our community and uh, let them know who we are and what we stand for. So we, I really appreciate the opportunity to interview with you today. Absolutely, thank you.